stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. It's been a long and brutal road to play in. Five teams have already fallen. Three remain standing on the battlefield, and only one will survive. Today's gauntlet, and they will the claim humanity. victory. And those guys had a good time. <laughs> a real good time. Probably a better time than we're going to have. I don't know, actually, because this is going to be a good one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to VCT America's kickoff play-ins. Say that five times fast. Coming at you live, of course, from the Riot Games Arena right here in sunny Los Angeles, California. I'm Golden Boy. You got yourself in Athena. You also have yourself in Uber. And we're going to talk about some video games today. But... Most importantly, what a day it has been. We've what, a, what an event, what a tournament this has been, man. I was going to say, today just started, but I yeah. like your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying I mean, to fix my chain rope. We there had we the, the rematches yesterday, right? A couple of really important rematches that gave us a great chance to take the temperature of teams now they've advanced a little bit through the kickoff. That, to me, was really compelling because some teams very quickly changed, very quickly fixed some yeah. of the issues they were facing earlier. Yeah, I, it, it, there, that was... Critical, I think, as well for us to continue to like learn more, see where these teams fall. We now know like the parity in these regions. It, it's insane. They're like America's the the competition is so close. I was actually just talking to the CEO of Sentinels outside. He was literally saying that he's like, it's insane how close everything is. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I'm just trying to say I got friends in high places. Um, but no, he was saying that as well, and and it's like it's just so reflected on on the results, what we've been seeing here. It's amazing. Yeah, I feel like every single one of these teams kind of approached the manner of like VOD review, talking about foundations and talking about where they kind of went wrong and I feel like the biggest way I saw that was G2 2 0 crew they looked so solid I feel like as a team they just had these crazy fundamentals that we've actually yeah. spoken to them before about like what they worked on they spoke a lot about their fundamentals and it was really really good to watch they looked so good and the thing is about G2 I think they have such a cute story yeah. they have the power of friendship so I was so happy to see everything go well and go their way honestly yeah, yeah and all the, now all people have to do is figure out how to beat loud yeah. anyway, <laughs> That's all you got to do, you know, somehow, some way. I, well, they'll figure it out, maybe or maybe not. But here's the thing, guys. Yesterday, we had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back elimination matches. Some great games, honestly. And, and look, we, we could do a normal recap, but where's the fun in that? Am I right, chat? So <laughs> it's time for some wordplay. Yes. Woo! I like wordplay. This is, this is a newish segment, I think. I don't know, honestly. Uh, but here's how it works. We're going to cast a crucial round from yesterday's matches. But here is the catch. You have to organically use the words that are on screen for your call. So first up, we have eSports Commentator of the Year. It's Uber. <laughs> All right, so let's see what your I put on my glasses for you. We got this. Oh. <laughs> okay, here are your words. Retirement. What? Scratch and Railroad. You'll be commentating a clip from MIBR and Cloud9. Okay. Mr. Leslie, as soon as the clip comes up, the floor is yours. All right, here a crack at this. Oxy here going to make his way in towards the site. Dimensional Drift, a lot of information at his fingertips here to pass along to Vanity, hoping to send MIBR to an early retirement here. Jake with the plant. Beautiful stuff from scratch. C9 have been able to cobble together a really nice hit on towards the B site, and MIBR forced into this retake. JZZ trying to make his way through. The flash is good. Oxy's able to find after Zine, and Oxy needs to sit in hookah behind this wall for a time. Seek is taken down. Zephyr forced back by the Molly here now, and here comes the defuse. Zephyr, he might not know about it here. Oxy's able to search for it, finds himself three butts. MIBR take the run away, railroading Cloud9. <laughs> ah. Dude, I was waiting for it to see how you were going to put Railroad. You had so many great moments for it, and then you went right at the end. How, how was it? Oh how was God. it? Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> the fact that it's a full stick diffuse is like a lot as well. Like all players sitting behind the utility, but I got Scratch. Yeah, you right. got, you got yeah, Scratch, you got Scratch, uh, what was the other one? Uh, retirement. retirement, you got yeah. Retirement yeah. in there, right and the you fit Railroad. Okay, well, everyone, it's <laughs> time to shoehorn it. Time to see how Athena works here. So, you are going to get Sentinels, oh, Leviathan. Gosh. You have 
cower, holiday, and tempt. Remember, folks, the point of the game, she's got to <laughs> organically got fit these this. words into Runner her up, commentary. Runner-up, sportscaster of the year. That's All it. right, we're starting out Viper in this Viper pit. Everyone seems to be cowering outside. They're not entering, but Zels is shutting down. Mazzino gets a triple kill out of that. He is going to be able to go on holiday after these <laughs> kills. And now left in this 1v1. It's so tempting to just oh. peek that heaven, and he does. He's just staring at it, and the 4K for Celsius. What a crazy I, 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 round. I'm okay to give it. I'm okay to give yeah. it. I actually give it. I actually give it an A plus for that. Yeah. <laughs> that was I good. Like, right, let's go, man. Let's go, dude. I love it. Yeah, yeah runner up esports casual, right? No, you, so. you actually get the title now. Actually, you have the trophy right there. <laughs> Well, I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that. Oh, apparently, really? I, I have to commentate oh, now. And great. by the way, I just want to let everyone know I was not prepared for this, okay? I, <laughs> I haven't casted Valorant since first strike. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, here we go. Whatever. All right, we got Symptom, Sunshine, and Intelligence. It's G2. Easy. All right, here we go. Let's see what the clip is as it's G2 crew match yesterday. This is good. All right, so we're starting things off. Firstly, we got MTA here as well as Leaf. Leaf with the op looking down. He's trying to see if he can catch Kesnit here. Now, Kesnit has a symptom of always wanting to try and go for these big fights, but a big hit's going to come in with the rocket, not connect, but he's going to find the op shot instead, and it's it's looking all nice and sunny with sunshine. Maybe one more here as well. And look at the smart play that we're seeing. Leap holding the angle, waiting to see if anyone comes around the corner. The intelligence of him to stay in that spot, knowing that the onus was going to be on the jet to fight. And that is the round. Ding, ding, ding. It's looking nice and sunny with sunshine. <laughs> I, I was hoping you gave me, you could see sunshine through the other the, the, the other side of this bloke's head when he shot him in the face. But. Yeah, you can all see the sunshine glistening from the top of my scalp as I was sweating commentating that <laughs> one. You know what they say, it's always sunny with sunshine in Philadelphia, folks. It's That's all. right. That, he said it. <laughs> I said it first. In any case, so guys. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for entertaining us uh, for this one. But here's, here's how everything is going to crack on today. The winners of these matches are all going to be facing one another in a round-robin play-in. Now, this is important to note here because uh, everyone's playing each other once, and the team that comes out on top is going to move forward to Saturday's playoffs. Then you can see the schedule right there. MIBR in the ringer doing the first two games. And here's the thing. I, I want to get a temperature check here. Where would you prefer to be as a player? Dude, I feel like being MIBR in this situation is literally You, you the like the game. double? Yeah, because you sit, you play your first game, whether you win or lose, you're literally warm for the second game as well. Mm. When you win, you have that momentum going into the second match. Whereas if you have this big gap in the middle, you kind of just sit there, yeah. you know, yeah. get cold. That's fair. That's fair. Talk about your mistakes. Okay. Kind of think about it. But what about G2, though? I kind of feel like G2 is not in the in the worst of spots because they'll go on the tail end back to back. It right? actually depends on how the games go. Like as a decorated multi-title champion in, in in basically every FPS title you could think of, <laughs> I my concern is that <laughs> if you have a problem in your first match, yeah. And then you, and it's quite critical, right? There yeah. might be sort of communication issues going on and you can't solve that in between match, match one and two, you have a problem. So mm -hmm. if you win that first game and you're feeling good and maybe you're not even that fatigued, right? Like you had a comfortable mm -hmm. roll through, you've got good vibes, then it's fine. But it can really depend. Like this is quite unique circumstances mm -hmm. to put players under. It does happen sometimes. Yeah. You have to have a, another level of mental fortitude here that just goes far and beyond what these regular matches have sort of required from these players. So that's something to bear in mind. This is where we see that true grit and determination that can For forge sure. champions. I mean, because uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but not that I can remember, we've ever done this before. So this is going to be uh, quite the challenge for these three teams here. Now, of course, we need to talk about the tiebreaker rules because this could come into play here if every team goes one and one. So here's how it works. First up, all right, in the event of a three-way tie, you can see there, it's playing map differential. And if somehow, some way, that's tied, then it goes to the playing round differential. And surely it won't go to that. So if that happens to be tied as well, then it will go to a BO1 between the teams that are still tied. And by the way, all three teams can still technically tie, in which case, I believe you just run back one BO1s or something like that. I don't know. And again, this surely can't happen. I feel like you're just surely nothing can go wrong. the biggest curse ever no. on this. Everyone behind How? the scenes is cursing at you right now. <laughs> Mitch, the odds are so low. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? You've got, you've got better chances of, like, finding more than one brain cell between Brennan's side shows. Here, so, like, it's, it is... 
it is very <laughs> unlikely when we talk about like map differential and stuff like that. Like that's super granular. Yeah. Uh, so I think we'll be fine here. Yeah. Right? If you're MIBR though, and you win th those two, and that is also uh, something important to know. If you win those two, MIBR is in. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the last teams uh, would play G2 and Sentinels would play to determine seedings as we go Seeding into the Seeding games in a tournament, the... baby. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's got to be done. So uh, that's basically how it works. Uh, hope you guys understand. But again, surely. Uh, Isn't like G2 I, send the ultimate banter match anyway? Yeah. So that <laughs> is fine. The fact that there like may not be as large stakes on it probably won't take away from the fact that there will be so much smack being talked. It'll yeah. be worth but it. But again, MIBR needs to win two in a row, yep. and then they're in. So we'll yep. see uh, if MIBR can do that. More on that in a little bit. But guys, we're always, we're always asking our players about agents and compositions and strategy. But today, we want to get down and nerdy. We want to ask some recommendations for their favorite pieces of media. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at another installment of Profiles. I would say if I could watch any show or movie and experience it for the first time again, I'll go with Breaking Bad. I think it would be Breaking Bad. I still watched it several times, I watched it five times. It would be a film Interstellar. Interstellar. I would say Interstellar, like, just my mind is blown, like, I just couldn't believe it. Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood. This anime has so many plot twists and lessons. I think it's the documentary of Jordan. I'd probably just want to rewatch Hunter x Hunter for the first time again. Oh, Hunter x Hunter. I Carly. Ah, complicado. Mr. Robot. Jujutsu Kaisen again, just because I've never seen animation as good as that. Drake and Josh for the first time again, just because that was my favorite show growing up. Probably the K-drama business proposal. Broken Nine Nine. It's my comfy show, you know. I always watch it. Any of the big three of like One Piece, Dragon Ball, or Naruto, or Bleach. I still rewatch The Sopranos, and I love it. But if I like had to, I would just rewatch that again. Senhor dos Anéis. Eu gosto muito da mitologia do Senhor dos Anéis. Filme, melhor trilogia de filme que eu já vi na minha vida, Senhor dos Anéis. Recomendo. Quem não assistiu, assista. <laughs> I love I love the idea of like oh yeah I'd love to experience the whole of One Piece again. Who has ten years yeah. free? Just what, what, what would be your thing? What would be your thing? Uh wow! I actually think if I could go back and watch Bucky Monogatari for the first time again. That's okay, it, yeah, that's my that's favorite it. anime. It's super weird and obscure. It's, it's hella good. Though. Okay, what about for oh you? Yeah, that's good, dude. I actually want to. I would watch Narcos again. Narcos oh, again. Yeah. That's a good one. Like, suits, it was actually. So good. Suits was good too. Ooh, yeah. Suits is good too. Okay, I would probably. Actually, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I would say. Um, Star Wars. Episode one. Get what? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. I, I went with my brother to go see that. It was one of the best experiences I ever had. So yeah, I, I want to do that again. Against Darth Maul when I went yeah. to that. I was so into yeah. it. Except Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. We don't talk about Jar Jar Binks. We said don't talk about Jar Jar no. Binks. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on, though. That's about as much time as he gets. Uh, we're <laughs> going to, of course, take a quick break. And then when we are back, we're going to dive into our first match of the planes. This is going to be awesome. It's MIBR versus Sentinels. And as always, we'll see you on the other side. Só mais um jogador. Opa, olha só ele, Niang. Olha só ele, Niang. Have a dodge and two can play a rocket. Satan is monstrous.
Welcome back, everyone, to day eight of the VCT America's kickoff. Now it's time for us to dive into that first match of the day. We got MIBR. They're going to be taking on Sentinels. And it, this is going to be tough. We were talking about it before. The Brazilian squad needing to go back to back here. We feel like coming out the gate, having that first game is going to be great for them just because they can kind of get themselves warm right out of the right out of the gate. But you're going to be playing up against Sentinels, who, you know, fantastic squad. Been putting up some numbers. We are looking at two teams who are fun fundamentally quite brilliant actually yeah. where MIBR we talked a lot around okay well they don't have a star player the console star player mm -hmm. the console would we'll get into that the consolation <laughs> being their fundamentals are fantastic sentinels might have both yeah. Their protocols are unbelievably well drilled. They are so disciplined and they have one of the best anchor players in John QT in all of America. So they are looking very, very good and they have that yeah. X factor. Yeah, I yeah. actually feel like their defaults are pretty similar too in the fact yeah. that they both, both teams love to work the map. They love to start off a little bit slow and they do have those really good mid-round protocols. Yeah, you know, for sure. Now, here's the thing, because uh, when we've been seeing MIBR, right, you know, they, they took on Cloud9, uh, you know, they've had some good runs and something that stuck out to me was that this team is playing to me good fundamental Valorant when it works Whoa. out for what? Oh, uh. I okay. have something to say about that. Okay, go on. Look, listen, MIBR, they have the post plants, okay. they have the lineups, they know how to get off a site after they plant. Uh, everything However, sounds good. Everything sounds good. However, they're also notorious for just taking their ones. They love to just <laughs> walk up short. That's true. They, they did that three, the three player yeah. push down. They love to just short. walk up dry, yeah. no util, take their fights. And I feel like for the most part, it has worked out in their favor. Sometimes it's been a little bit questionable. It only seems to happen when they're about three or four rounds ahead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> they take contact on the, on the extremities for, for no good reason. Right. The round you mentioned that was on bind, right, where they pushed three players yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. That was like what they were at uh, eleven. Yeah. <laughs> the round before that, yeah. they literally take contact on B long and showers simultaneously, yeah. and both players get pooped on. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> it's it's so odd because yeah. they yeah. play so well and they have they're yeah, well yeah. drilled. When they get far enough ahead, they're like ah, stuff it. They're Let's just like just... having fun. They're yeah. Like, yeah. But I, I think fun. that is uh, you know. As the team continues to, you know, play on this stage, I do feel like we're starting to see them develop that identity and also develop some stars as well, like one of those players. And also want to clarify a big shout out to my boy Fraud, uh, who uh, gave me the the inside scoop here. I I misspoke and said the RGL Meister was actually the IGL, but it's actually Mazin who's been making some brilliant calls as you know well. What RGL rhymes with IGL. Yeah. Yeah. Which he's not. Yeah, which he's not. So that's how I. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, though, let's talk about RGL Meister because one of the things that Fraud told me is that this guy is a beast, and they're so satisfied with his output. Thing is, he's going to have to do it here against, you know, some 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 big names in Valorant. This guy is a duelist in like a role player's body. It's crazy. You want some stats, TV? You want some numbers? 14 and six. That is RGL versus Oxy in the head to head. Wow. That is one, wild. And it was nine to one, uh, or yeah, one to nine on a cent. So absolutely rolling him. Also with like six three Ks over the course of this yeah. series. Yeah. The clutch factor is strong in this one. This guy no, is sure. unreal. He literally reminds me of like debut Nats when he was just like Ooh, in okay. his prime going crazy on that Viper roll. Yeah. He is so sick. RGL, you put him in a clutch, his name literally should be Clutchmeister because yeah. I every single time I'm like, oh, one v four, he's winning. I like that no branded Clutchmeister, <laughs> and honestly, he's been living up to it for sure. Uh, you know, just continues to perform, continues to contribute to this team exponentially. We wanted a star, we have found a star, and his name is RGL Meister. Yeah, and like you notice here, look at the first kill, first death down the bottom. He's not involved in a lot of those initial engagements though. But look up the list just a little bit more. 2.5 KDA on Ascent, right? That is the kind of map that we spoke highly of C9 mm -hmm. because we felt that defensively they had good protocols, especially in shutting down the A split. But there was a Viper wall that gets set up and quite often C9 got forced into retake yeah. whenever they moved the third player off that yeah. site. And that was something that MIBR could identify whenever the A site was weakly held. Mm. They really pounded it over and over yeah. again. And I feel like we talk a lot about RGL and his mechanics, but his rotations, like you said, he has like some of the best rotations I've seen. He has some of the best Very Viper too. play, controller play that I've yeah. seen. He genuinely, as a controller, is solid, like straight up solid. His gameplay, his aim, his mechanics, his ideas. Solid. Literally, when he his takes hair, space, his, his hair, picture, his glasses. His GPA, 
Yeah, blood pressure. Yeah. Blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Cholesterol levels. Blood pressure. Incredible. Blood pressure's great. <laughs> yeah. This guy's got everything. He's space. <laughs> Follicle count. Off the charts. Honestly. Yeah. Honestly, can't relate. So, yeah, I get it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, but I get what you're saying, yeah. though. He's got everything, yeah, and no, that is everything. and that is what this team needed. They needed someone to be a force for them. But as we pivot over to the other side, I think something that we are going to be paying attention to is, yes, you know, the, uh, Oxy contributed a lot in that initial game against MIBR, and then when they had the rematch, they were able to take him down, which was big for them because, you know, yes, you could say, like, it's the rematch. They got to be a little bit more prepared, a little bit more ready, but it also just felt like they just shut him down. Down in, a, in a very effective way, and they recognize that that was one of their primary win conditions going into it, and they performed it very well. Yeah, I feel like Ox the Oxy we saw against MIBR was a little bit scared, a little bit hesitant, and I yeah. feel like just in general, I've been looking to see Oxy kind of flourish and be that player, and I just, I haven't felt it that much. Neither team's Jet Duelist had a good series, though. Yeah. I'd seen there is 17-16. I think he started, like, 0-8, yeah. to be fair. Oxy was playing really restrained on Ascent. He was, like, anchoring a heaven and it's a so it's either going to be one or the other. Right. right. But in the past, he had been aggressively playing forward of Omen Smokes and Util in tree to try and deny the cat rotate. That wasn't happening. And I wonder if the advice to him after the game against NRG was to slow it down, be a bit more disciplined. But I get a sense watching him, he hit the other end of the other end of the spectrum because mm. Cloud9 still needed that spark, and Oxy didn't look like he was in the mindset to provide it. Yeah. I mean, he got predictable at a certain point, and MIBR was just, like, punishing that. His entries, his path, his path, pathing, his movement, everything. Yeah. Like, it got yeah. so predictable, and I feel like we didn't see the craziness were, that we normally used to. There were some good trap plays yeah. that C9 managed to funnel yeah. uh, MIBR into where Oxy could capitalize, like, with the operator on a couple of rounds. But in general, he wasn't able to have that same flair that we'd seen from him already, that kind of, you know, these 4Ks, yeah. these huge moments, and, and that's individual big. initiative yeah. taking we didn't see. When you're able to take a, a player, a young player, and you're able to kind of, like, shut them down like that, that speaks volumes because, you know, this, he should be playing with no fear, yeah. right? Um, but, hey, you know, that it goes to show, like, where MIBR thrives is being able to isolate these things, isolate these win conditions and really hone in on them. They're going to need to do that today because... Yeah. Can they handle Zekin? <laughs> plain, <laughs> plain and simple. Zekin yeah. has been playing some great Valorant. I think, you know, he's he's really just... Uh, he's finding a second gear, third gear. I don't know, but this kid seems like he's got layers upon layers. Yeah, I mean, Zekin's been super explosive as a player. He takes his own timings. He fights. He goes crazy. Like, he gets set up by his team, and he actually does a really, really good job of entering and taking space. And I feel like just in general, when you compare that side to side to Oxy, it's a little bit... Not the same player. It's really hard. Yeah, yeah, they're not, they are in fact not the same player. Well, you know, yes, not correct. functionally Oxy speaking. Oxy and Zekin are two different players. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> yeah, corporate yeah. wants you to find the. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> Shazam actually made a great tweet yesterday, yeah. which, like, Shazam's someone I think who understands, like, how to get n newer players, younger players conditioned and into playing form. And he just said, look, I think Oxy is still going to be one of the best players in the world, but he needs time. He needs time. Yes. Uh, this format is brutal, it's grueling, and there isn't much time in between matches. But Zekin has already been through that that phase. I mean, we had criticism of him on Exet, for example. He's already played internationally with that yeah. team. He is young, so we forget just how long yeah. he has behind him. But this guy has been empowered to go and do his thing. And that makes a big difference. No one has to micromanage him. He just goes and, and does what yeah. has to be done. Like yeah. that last round against Leviathan on Bayern, like the guy with that you know double rocket kill, uh, yeah. he looked incredible. Yeah. And he looked truly unleashed. I mean, yeah. we also need to mention that Duelist is literally the most volatile role yeah. in Valorant yeah, for yeah. me. Like, you have said to, that when he changed, Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Like, you have to be able to make space for your team. You have to make good decisions. You have to use your result to delay. It's just, it's so much packed into this one agent that's also expected to top frag. It's insane. Yeah, Zekin really uh, continues to illustrate why this Sentinel's organization has invested so much into him. And it's for good reason. He provides, he gives them what they need. He dog walked Aspas on Bind, by the way. Seven to three in the head to head. Yeah. That, I mean, when you can boast that kind of stat as a young player coming in against the best player in the world, you are having a very good day. Here's that head to head, right? And I think it's pretty telling, especially the first blood present, which is not something we look at 
always, but for two duelists that are the tip of the spear, that's how you really set these two apart. And I think the stats speak for themselves. Yeah, yeah even Zekin, like his mechanics in terms of operating, like normally we see aspects of Which is the thing he's working on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. <laughs> he's so good already fundamentally. And like then he's, when he's he just picks up the op, he said he's working on it. <laughs> Aspas, he's known for his op. He's known for holding those angles in yeah. defensively. Zekin, I feel like, is also extremely smart with the way that he uses his op, the way that he positions himself on every single play that they make. And I feel like he has a really good team surrounding him, enabling him to do that. Yeah, I, I, what I'm uh, fascinated as well, and we'll find out in a little bit, is where we're going to be going for the series. Because oh, I, can't wait. I really do hope we end up on Bind, because I feel like it's just such a great battleground yeah. for both of these teams to kind of try out some new ideas. And I'm actually just interested to see, like, what we end up getting in that uh, series layout, because I think that that could very well determine, like, uh, who wins, <laughs> honestly. We've been seeing that play a big role in this tournament. I mean, it was talked about yesterday in the Sentinels versus Leviathan game, yeah. how much difference a map change makes. We went to Breeze, Leviathan looked very different, Aspas had that space to control, and Sentinel won, I think, when they let Le Leviathan into the site, when they had yeah. to play retake, they won one out of ten. Yeah. on that particular map. Yeah. I don't think they want to play Breeze, for example, <laughs> right? I agree with yeah. that. But I think they ban Icebox in a sense, typically, right? So that should narrow down. We might even see Sunset at the end of the series yeah. here. Yeah. But uh, again, this team defensively, their retakes, I mean, God, six out of nine retakes on split, four out of five, yeah. four versus five conversions. So yeah. even losing a player at the start of the round, and they won two out of three Ecos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which uh, when you, when you, because uh, those rounds, right, especially with the, the MR12 format and how everything is, like, that matters yeah. so much, well, right? I mean, I really, really want to be, want to see split, because speaking of those retakes and postmats, we've seen the same thing on the other side, yeah, on the MIBR side, yeah. where their retakes and their postmats are so good. But if you have MIBR postmatting and then send with the really good retakes, like, it's, Gonna be a toss up as to who wins each one. Yeah. Oof, I, I didn't even. It's gonna yeah, be so yeah. that. It's literally, they have each other's strengths and yeah, weaknesses. Yeah, they so can it's, eat it's, each other's sandwiches. I genuinely am so excited for this game. <laughs> yeah, no, no food allergies between eat. them. You know, no <laughs> yeah. problems. Finish each other's sentences, finish yeah. each other's sandwiches, same difference. I'm excited though. That is, uh, you're so right. That is gonna be a really cool thing to see these two teams. Don't you finish like my it. sandwich, mate. You'll be in for it, I'll tell you uh, what. I, I, need, I need that nutrition. Well, yeah, you need it. You need the grown boy. That being said though, let's actually get a little bit of a vibe check. And who better to do that? than Elizabeth. She's actually going to be hanging out with Zelsis, and I think they're going to do something quite silly. Zeddy! I challenge you, Zelsis, to an arm wrestling match. Are you ready? No, but I'm ready. Okay, will you break you by? <laughs> okay, don't break my arm, right. please. Three, two, two one. one. <laughs> <laughs> please buy the Sentinels Classic Bundle. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, is that young Devin Lorette out there? the competition uh, let's go so i saw elizabeth so and she said she was like yeah so like we were just you know playing around and then he was like all right go serious and then, <laughs> and that's when that happened that's amazing of course folks we're minutes away from this first match and uh, it's going to be great let's go ahead and take a look at the pools uh and, or sorry the map pool yeah, and see really where we're going to be going here it's oh. going to be split oh. ascent and sunset no bind no bind band bind Oh my god. So where were the Yolu maps? I mean, I was thinking that they would be like VOD watchers and just be like, oh, let's go bind. Like, we know exactly how they default, but no. Okay. That is actually wild. Okay, but we do get split, which is something yeah. that we really, really wanted yeah. to see, Athena. Yeah, yeah we've been getting a lot of split from MIBR. Both these teams look so strong on split. And again, this goes to show that MIBR's retakes on post hunts are so, so, so good. Their post hunts as well are sick. Sentinels, they're so active. They love taking back sight. They like pushing and taking space. So they're going to deny any of these retakes. So two players I want you to look out for on Sentinels on Split, especially. On mm -hmm. one side of the map, it's John QT. On the other, it's Sassy. They have incredible anchoring. Yeah. They are so hard to yeah. shift off the site, which means that those retakes become far easier mm -hmm. because they, they, again, they, 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 yeah, buy, they buy time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah. stall. I mean, John QT wins like 1v3s, 1v2s, might trade himself, but mm -hmm. always trades up in value, right? That's going to be pro a problem for MIBR in situations when the round timer starts to run down. Ooh. They might swing into a weak site, but if it's against Sassy or John QT, yeah. They don't have an advantage even with more yeah. players. I'm also curious yeah. to see what MIBR does regarding like their initial rounds as well, right? They they like to group up a lot early on, and I think that that could maybe be something. I mean, that they I take just hope they of. change their comp because I'm not excited to see the solo sky. Like, I did think they play Ko Sky yesterday? Did they make that adaptation? That was on Bind. That was yeah. Yeah. Right. So on Split, they like to play that solo sky, and I feel like that's going to be so rough when you yeah. have players like Zelsis, Zekin, Junkie T, like everyone on Sentinels can yeah. kind of be that outstanding player, and I feel like they're going to have to use so much neutral to push each one of these players off of their. 
irrespective of Yeah, spot, Tens so. also is someone to watch. You know what Sentinels are doing based on what side of the map he's on. That He loves to play aggressive on defense on that A ramps. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of teams, though, have already seen through that. They've seen the tape, and they're trying to pressure that position mm -hmm. blind at the start of the round. All right, well, let's hear some predictions, guys. Who do you think is going to win this? Okay, he's going Damn, for the zaddy and the boy. He was so passive. All right, I, I feel bad because, you know, I was walking down the halls past um, Zelsus and he goes for the fist bump. I didn't even see it. So Oof. I'm feeling bad. Uh, yeah, sorry. So you're it. making you up for it. This is you making up for it. Send 2-1. Okay. I think it's a pretty close game. I think it's going to be 2-1. I, I, went, I went with Sen as well. What's the score? Um, what, what score do you think? Uh, you know what? I do think that MIBR is going to take one. I agree with you yeah, on the 2-1. I, 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 I would be a little, little shocked if MIBR don't. This is not the same MIBR team, right? This is a squad that can't contend. So I need to see Artisan step up. He was 2-11 first kill, first death for the whole series yesterday. That's not good enough. That's very true. I don't true. care if you're not the star player. You have to have impact on that duelist against the team with Zekin. Okay, I, I, I couldn't agree more. This is going to be a massive game for both of these teams. And today, these three squads go head-to-head -head in this arena, but only one will make it to the playoffs. We have MIBR, Sentinels, and G2 Esports. Folks, it's going to be good. Day eight of VCT America's kickoff starts. Ahora. Opa, olha só ele, Niang! Olha só ele, Niang! Have a dodge and Juke play a rocket! Zekan! It's monstrous! Então, basicamente, os play-ins agora funcionam com os segundo times colocados do grupo que passar. Eles, todo mundo vai se enfrentar e o melhor time que passar vai para os playoffs. Great out of leap. Can he get another? Absolutely. Is it gonna be enough? Surely. Zelsus! Pretty grueling weekend, but now that, you know, we made play in, I think we're the favorites for sure. I don't think they're the favorites. I think everyone is very close. Stylistically, they're not that hard to play against. These people are people that we are familiar with. We're gonna be confident coming in because we know their style. What a chance! G2 eu acho que é um time que eles têm uma sinergia muito boa, né? Porque eles estão bastante tempo juntos e eles têm umas comps bem diferentes também, que é algo que a gente tem que tomar cuidado. MIBR is kind of like, you know, a dark horse for me. You know, their team is like no, nothing to be messed with. He swings and that's another Red Bull Club for RGL. O jogo contra Sentinels vai ser um jogo bem difícil também. Eles são jogadores muito bons. É, tem o Saci lá naquele time que eu já joguei com ele, então eu conheço muito bem como ele pensa, ele também conhece muito bem como eu penso, então vai ser um, um jogo bem interessante. Obviamente é uma pressão a mais, né, que a gente não pode errar agora. Only one spot left in playoffs. You gotta come ready to, you know, just 13 0 everything and make it through. Riot Games Arena, it's time to bring out our first play in squad, Sen City! Give it up for Sentinels! Uma das tags mais lendárias dos esportes. Chegou a hora do Mi PR. Eu não sei da onde Amigo 
Quando eu ganhei peti são coisas da vida O que me dói é a minha família longe Torcedores vaiam, outros me motivam Vou persistir nessa longa estrada da vida Vencer a obrigação, derrota é uma lição Desistir pra nós não é mais opção MIBR is going to go through the ringer today as they have back-to-back -back matches. So they first need to overcome the Sentinels, and then they'll have to worry about G2 Esports. On the other side to that, for Sentinels, a big win here can give them a bit more calm in their minds as they prepare and get ready for the final game of this play-in because they will be playing the first and the third. A lot of pressure on both of these teams, Uber. Both of these teams basically permaban Icebox, which means that MIBR essentially had an extra free ban and they targeted Bind. They don't want to deal with this confusing split default style with the Yoru oh, from Sentinels. They want to play some honest Valorant <laughs> some here. Good, wholesome I Valorant. really thought that they would just bot watch and like pick it and just go crazy, but apparently not. It might just be a bit too much for them, but don't don't forget, Sentinels look very good on split, but I'm I'm gonna say it. Levitan cheats on split. Yeah, I just right don't now. know. I, I just not much really cheats. to extract from that, you know? Like nothing. Yeah. Don't hold on. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I feel bad saying that, but it's just the reality of it, you know? So Sentinels are certainly gonna be uh, coming into this one with a bit more yeah. confidence, but I think MIBR can maybe use that to their advantage here. I mean, I really don't wanna see double duelists and solo sky from MIBR. If they do that, I'm gonna be upset. Because I feel Blood like Red Man. I feel like they can go super aggressive and they can take that space away from them on split. Yeah. But I feel like Sentinels already does such a good job of that that MIBR should stick to their strengths, which is playing together as a team, but not just zooming and without any flashes and having enough util for those retakes. Yeah, I mean, looking ahead in the series as well, like I don't think Ascent is a map that Sentinels love to play right now. They actually, it's their second ban if they can mm -hmm. get to it. Yeah. And maybe I want to pick it first, so it was almost guaranteed to come up in this particular series. Yeah. Again, two out of three ecos were run one by Sentinels on split. And remember, in the ecos right now, you are not investing. You yeah. are not getting half armor, no yeah. nonsense. You are full eco with some util, and then full armor vice, so you don't fall prey to the outlaw. Yeah. So that's even more incredible that they're getting away with that. That means the team has a really solid idea of how to play the game, and their protocols are watertight. All right, here it is, Agent Select. By the way, just want to remind everyone, make sure you go out there, pick up your team capsule, support your squad. You saw the Sentinels one there looking cool. So uh, get out there and uh, support teams that support this awesome sport. Here we go, though, as we start things off. Tens, Omen, this doing what he's got to do. Our GOAT. Yeah, look, I, I, I wouldn't expect anything particularly crazy. I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't think, I think we're going to get much. Jet, yeah. Yeah. We, we might get, like, Jet Rays still from mm. MIBR. Yeah, like, still I trying really to, don't want to see that. I'm not a huge fan of it either, yeah. I'll be honest. I really like to see Double Initiator mm -hmm. uh, on a lot of these comps if possible. I just think they're so they're good with it. their, like, fundamental post plants and retakes. And I feel like they Double struggle duelist. when they only have that one flash or... Mazine has to do a really good job at saving his util every single time. Is there an Which option sucks. instead of the sky that they could potentially use, or it's just the sky I mean, is just too I reliable? I think a double initiator info. would be cool. You can play but breach with the rays. I like breach. You, I love breach. Yeah, I mean, like breach will, like works really well on this particular map. There, I mean, there's some teams that are, you know, even bringing in uh, KO occasionally yeah. uh, on, on this kind of map, right? John QT Cipher. I mean, you, we will see a very standard composition here from Sentinels. I look if. Artsin is going to pick Jet, that's fine. Yeah. I need him to He's make pop off. impact. See, I don't want to half yeah. on it, right? Yeah. But And he doesn't have to be a star. Yeah. But yeah. if he's playing Duelist, yeah. he needs a first, first kill. He doesn't I have mean, to be a star, he needs to be reliable. He's even going to struggle against the Cypher trips. Like, he's not going to be able to properly enter unless they actually genuinely clear that. And I feel like that's why Raze is so much stronger, even as a solo Duelist, because they can just satchel those trips and get them out of the way. But, I mean, I don't know. We'll see how this bears out. Yeah, well, no one's really going to change anything up too much here, and it seems like uh, this could be, you know, I guess you can make the argument, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Look, if, yeah. you're, if your team doesn't want, doesn't have the ability to deal with that Cypher util, you're going to be fighting into the strong side every round on attack, which really yeah. disadvantages you and opens you up to a John QT lurk later in the round. All right, well, this is it, the first match of the day. We got a long one, folks, so I hope you're ready to go. Let's send it over to our captain. And we know what you guys want. You want yourself some brand inside show. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, even Brennan Sideshow or Skibbity Toilet haven't actually decided <laughs> between the two yet. But 
Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. An early start for the players, Josh. Listen, Sentinels versus MIBR. It kicks off here. And really, this is the marathon. This is the endurance test for these teams. Think, yeah. think about Sentinels. They got off their second match yesterday. No time to really prepare. No time to really rest. They're jumping into it first thing today. I think anything is possible in a format like this. I, Sentinels are coming in as the favorites. Everybody thought Group B was the hardest. Whoever made it out and got to the play-ins, they would be favored. But you should in no way write off MIBR or G2. You look at the map pool, if MIBR are able to pull away a win on Split or Sunset, they've got a great chance here. Oh yeah. I'm looking at the buy on the pistol. Mazine has bought Frenzy Double Flash, so this is gonna be a fast round, no map control. All grouped up into B, they are just contacting forwards. Disrespect shown as two players from Sen. Paranoia held by tens. Gonna have to be a key piece of util. Now the explosion straight through into the side. It's a double satchel. Paranoia matters not. In the close quarters fight, tens. Still active close to the pillar. He needs some help and assistance from the rest of his team. Taking the damage and finally, the reinforcements are arriving. <laughs> They may have played the last game yesterday, but they looked incredibly prepared for that pistol. Like I said, Mazine goes frenzy, double flash. So they knew that that was going to be a B-burst on the side of MIBR. They'd already planned that. But for Sen, they, they don't know exactly what pistol round's coming out, and yet they looked perfectly prepared to deal with it. Tens holding the paranoia. And sure, the first wave of people ended up getting caught, but second is out through the smoke on top of rafters. John comes in from spawn, all supporting Tens who tucks on sight. Impeccably played from Sen on the pistol. And you look at my expectations for this map are that both teams are look, gonna look even better on their defense side. I would agree with that. Desk was talking it up as well. I mean, Sen's defensive setups are so good on this map. And they're so happy to play retake and they're winning, I think the stat was 60% of them in the desk right yeah. before this. So they just have such a good idea in terms of what the protocols are, what areas of the map to fight over that are but that, essential. But that also means that if you're a fan of MIBR, if you're rooting yeah. for this Brazilian organization to have redemption here and make it through to our kickoff playoffs, then you should still hold hope, even if this first half doesn't work out too well for them. Yeah. Because they've also looked Pretty solid the on the defense side running double duelist, which is a little unusual, to be honest. Now, in this round, MIBR have found an opening. There are three Sen players walking down mid, dominating that area, and MIBR have walked all the way into A. Sen love playing A retake. Usually, they'll have cypher trips over there, so you'll know to some degree when MIBR are in. But Sen could easily get caught out by FRZ or by Ardazin here. And yet, yeah, running and gunning will clear up. FRC, lovely left. shot. Rattled across there. This is A with that one. Plant will still Spike planted. come online into the post plan here. Now, only three players left. A lot of damage done to Jason Zay. He can't think there's too much of a chance. He'll tuck himself into the off angle cage. Blocks off the retreat, at least for the approach now. The Sentinels are still being watched as well. Look at that awareness from John QT, making sure he's got this guy penned in. Ten, ten's just paranoid all of his team. <laughs> the Satchel through, RGL onto the side. All the pieces accounted for, the exception of Jason Zay, but finally there it is. So, four players survive. Yeah, very well dealt with from Sentinels. That's the, the real discipline and the protocols in terms of how they come back into the round. Adazine looked like he could have tried to make a play over towards screens if somebody had been snoozing at the wheel and he caught somebody off guard. That's not the case. Senna's super disciplined. Even Tens throws out the paranoia to clear out like hell. And he knows he's going to blind some of his team, but that's the piece of utility they've chosen to throw in that situation. Ooh, look, looks amusing, but it's part of the game plan. So now Sen have got themselves some of that like close range weaponry to work with here. That's going to require them to get a bit more aggressive. They could try a flood Honestly. defense in this round rather than some big set retake. There's a lot of bite to this round, despite the economical disadvantage that Senna working with on the bonus. You think about a map like Split, very close quarters. Smoke, first one propped up here. MIBR still opting into just the contact plays, but a flash through and a pop there. That is that connection. Spraying with Zekin, then an aid, and it's just a follow-up. And a follow-through with Zelsis right there behind him. It's like clean up. Zelsis is dropping, it opens up mid. On QT gonna be feeling the heat now. Turned up ever so slightly, but there's no pace increase. Maybe are happy to slow it down. FRZ gives away that he's playing inside B main. So they know that the 1-3-1 default, the player over towards B was pushed fairly deep. 
now they come away and Sentinels are re-exploring mid. The damage maybe with a rifle it could have been possible. Sassy also dropped out of 15. There's no way he survives that, but he does. It might be R. Very slow approach to the round, but it looks like they're going to be able to get themselves in a great position to A split. Tens, Paranoia, and a Stinger. Anchoring A from Elbow. So much pressure about to come into left. him. There's no more util for MIBR really to use to try and clear him out of this corner. Here we go. Straight in again with the Stinger. How many bullets Five left? Whips out the Ghost as well. No time for the reload. Smoke drop down to try and at least split up this site. Here's the oh. footsteps. And John QT is right there behind him. Seconds dwindling. Rattled down. They have to try and get this down with the spike, but already it's dropped down into the smoke. 1v1. Oh, this is so low! And a clutch for John QT. I have to question that. Artazini goes for the swing in the fight there. He had time to plant. He did. I mean, he just gets scrambled in that moment. Red Bull clutch coming through. John QT officially, but I'm very impressed with what 10's got done there. Stinger kill. Finds the perfect time to peak elbow. Throws out a smoke, which is really nice for him to play around. Stopped him getting swung. And then he's also able, just with a ghost, to set up a little crossfire with John to be able to pick off another player. You look at that on the minimap, I mean, we are about to crunch four players into tens. It doesn't look doable for it. And yet he still survives. Really shouldn't have been. Swift entrance into mid. All the bullets rattled away. Zelsus is in trouble. He can really get punished. Really get punished hard. Ooh, oh my, stalemate. Walking away, wounds inflicted onto either side. Artazine almost getting caught by the dog as well. In the meantime, Zekin's tucked into this corner. Fairly unexpected, you've got to imagine. FRZ's pressuring over towards A main. Didn't meet a trip necessarily, but I think saw the cam up in A heaven. Which John is using just to make sure that nobody's taking space. Here. It's another round where MIBR are kind of getting really deep here. Starting their exec from a lot of map control. That suggests to me that they have a good read on how Sen are playing. Trailblazer to try and feign like they could be taking B control. Maybe pulling a few rotations away. This time the strike for MIBR. Now the scale out into heaven, revealing himself. Sassy behind maps. Definitely a spam ball in that spot. They're not ready for it. Celsius dominates the smoke angle. Look at this one here. Even close to the default plan spot. Sassy just has to watch his teammates back, which he will. Shuts down Addison. RGL Meister. Sen are throwing in some different looks. This time, hard anchoring with John Cutie and Sassy. That's not something that we've seen them do too much. Normally, they're playing for A Heaven Control. But really, what decides that round is that JCSA is just not ready for Zelsis to come into this smoke. It's such a risky decision from Zelsis to walk into it like that. And unfortunately, it was just as JCSA was kind of backing off. There was such a serious chance there for Zelsis to Lose that jewel, I drop mean, a weapon, I mean, yeah. snowball into MRBR, having an advantage. But not the case. Tiny differences in the round, but 4-0 to zero for Sen. Get the guns online for MIBR now. The attack side is a very structured approach from MIBR in almost oh. every round. They have not noticed this cam. John's had the cam in heaven the whole time, and they just aren't even thinking about it. So there's yeah, two players down. over towards A with the contact. They're going to play through this one. Snake bite, nade, or pushes the players out into the open wide! And Zetkin rips them apart! Based off the information that they have there, how does MIBR possibly get this? Oh, 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 2k from FRZ! Oh. FRZ! The spike still down, and these players up towards B having a mid, undetected as yet. Not great info on where they are, although RGL stomping around in vents is going to give away the spot. Two piece though, maybe enough chaos strewn into the round for MIBR to stand that chance. It's so, so difficult to retrieve the spike. Contends is coming around behind. I don't know, he went gliding right over there. Heads to here, the ropes, yeah, he's just trying to fight them right behind. <laughs> one for one. <laughs> they know exactly where RGL is. I mean, seconds. played all the noise in the world. Oh, almost doable. We saw RGL. Go crazy for MIBR in the game against Cloud9. You don't want to offer him too many of the chances to be able to get that, but five in a row from Sentinels. Right, as good of a start as you could hope for. The cam in this round, giving them full info that there were players on A-Ram and allowed them to do a re-clear. 
three but it's seconds. really rare that you see a reclear that doesn't involve sky utility yeah like a flash that was a raise nade and a snake bite and they just completely cleared Mazine out of the position and Mazine, unfortunately, trying to call these super disciplined, slow 1-3-1 defaults for MIBR. Not only is he kind of getting outread by Sentinels, who are being very mobile on defense and changing up their setups, he's also got caught in that round, sat at the bottom of the scoreboard, 0-5. and five. This is going to be tough. It is going to be difficult for MIBR to come up with a game plan that works here. Yeah, that's the trouble. You're trying you know, go explosive, increase that tempo off the rip as soon as the barriers go down. Center perfectly happy to play retake. A supportive util is always there as well, just to make sure if there is a player anchoring, for example, out into elbow. You know, Tens likes to play there, sometimes Sassy. It's usually going to be smokes to support them, or maybe even just really far back defensive trips. This is the real issue you run into, honestly. You Start playing against Sentinels on split. It's like a home field advantage. They put so much work into this one particular side of the map, alternating the setups, and they're so well drilled of how they play it. MIBR don't need many rounds on this half, but they do need some. Yeah, <laughs> you can't, can't just sit at a goose egg, it. exactly. Double satchel up top gear, nade, rebounded. That's going to be landing into vents. Late trip. Put down by John QT with a side gain and gathered and exactly what I was saying prior. I mean, Senna perfectly happy to give you all the space here because they're so drilled with the retake protocol. Now this round though might get a little difficult because of the pit that FRC's thrown down. And the showstopper. Yeah, well, they say, oh, close here. To speaking of that, trying to reclear him. Yeah, there's a smoke in his face. He hears him. So many against the wall rebounds has traded. One for one is actually not that bad there for Sentinels. Sassy Seekers can help them reclear this pit. You want to it. They could have almost got three in that spot. Cosmic Divide. Offloaded. A lot of utils to try and win this round. Out. Oh, RGL. Down. That's the rocket. And just catching onto the heels of Mazine. In through the smoke. Shotguns about. Last play. Let this hit for Z. And he can't stand that pressure. Sentinels too good. So beautifully done by Sen there. And it's brutal to watch from MIBR's perspective because that's an eco round, but they feel like it's winnable. They got in onto the plant, okay, so they use the pit. They use the showstopper. You, they use their big tools that they would want here. Cosmic Divide as well. Yeah. And it was winnable, but the outplay there from Zekken to dodge the rocket, get a kill off the back of the Seekers, pop his own ultimate, and then come in off the back after he'd naded FRZ out of the safe corner. I mean, just a glorious round from second. And unfortunately, even when the uh, the team play requires a little bit of individualism, Sen have got it. Unfortunately for MRBR, that is. Look at the way they adjust the setups again, I mean, pit into mid, adjustments with the trips all over towards B. It funnels MIBR now, in through B main. It's going to be putting a lot of emphasis onto John QT with his setups. And now right in his face. Still good for one. I mean, there's a player above him and to the side at the bottom of the smoke. What is going on? <laughs> Phantom moment. Just <laughs> spraying whilst uh, strafing from side to side there. Chill. Only two players surviving. At least gets the plant off, but you've got to think again. So damn hard. Mazine, B main control. Maybe you've got to take some risks in this situation, yeah, in this destroyed. scenario. Can't just let them play for the retake. Optimally, there's one. Last Trade was a bit standing. delayed, but Tens eventually gets it labored in the process. Sassy with a defuse sticking half already. And the win conditions. Are just dwindling. Sentinels up to seven. Azine is going to want to save this gun. And Sentinels, they are the favorites in this play. -in. And they have looked phenomenal on the defense side of Split. But I was expecting there to be more moments than this for MIBR to be able to get some impact in these rounds. It's just looked clinical from Sentinels. Be looking at one of the fastest maps we've seen in America. I don't know what that is, but we'll get our finest minds on the job, probably. And notice how they've moved their defensive setup again. John Cutie was anchoring B in the previous round. This time, moves his setup back over towards A. Now, very difficult to get a read on exactly what's going on when your players on the outsides of the map 
play such kind of passive positions. I mean, look at the way that these players are positioned over here. It's very far away from the action. Generally yeah. speaking, MIBR, the people holding yeah. the outsides of the map are going to play really disciplined. But that also means you don't get a good read on who's anchoring where. You know, you interact with the Cypher utility very late in the round. FRZ's going to try to make something happen with a slightly more aggressive lurk on a ramp. Here. But his, his toes have been seen. Spotted. Betrayed. Feet picks for free? <laughs> That's just out of pocket. Okay. 45 seconds. I mean, they know that FRZ is there. They're now using the Sky Dog to flush him out. Force made to try and commit over towards A. You can see the spikes making its move and ground over towards it, but Sentinels are not giving up this space. Not out of heaven. Players through main now. Back forwards, kill trip. John QT is to set up an adjustment you can. Read this one. A gap into the wall. Reveals all. Wow, oh, Sassy to get the one pick and now just evacuates, backing away. Spike dropped down into a really unfortunate location, playing within the smokes. Eventually will start to fade here. Players walking up onto the sides, but look at it. Players don't know which way to look here for MIBR. It's just impossible. There's no easy fight granted. And there's eventually going to be the triple phase of the Satchel to set it all up. Oh. Eight to zero. It's clinical. It's it really a masterclass. Is. It absolutely is. And you've got to remember as well that MIBR are playing last year's meta. There was a lot of talk from the desk about how they didn't really like the Solo Sky, but I think it goes even a little deeper than that because Sentinels are also playing Solo Sky, right? In terms of the initiators they have online. But the fact that you know what MIBR are going to do, and you've seen it all, all last year, there is nothing new really that MIBR can pull out on this side of the map, or even the other, that you haven't experienced. And Sen's comp is so good at being able to shut down what MIBR are going for. Blinded. They need something huge here. I don't know what that is, but... Mitch on the desk was asking Artisine to step up and be the big player, or at least to have a better interaction with those first kill to first deaths. Yeah. We saw RGL, the Rigglemeister. <laughs> it was wriggling all over them in the Cloud9 game. Taken out. But I got the it potential. Just, there haven't been any moments where individuals can shine in this map so far for MIBR because the team shutdown has been so severe. No gaps for them to work with. A draft dash in through. Art team is going to the grind for the site. The plan online. Nade forwards. JZ wants to really press the advantage he potentially had. Artazine planted for heaven. What? How are they all going down here? I mean, Nade's just popping off all over the place. It's just spam from heaven kills Artazine and then another Nade coming through. Paranoia to clear it out. Got a retreat here. Close tuck to the corner. Second. This guy is on one right now. He knows what a player is. The bullets fired. Transfer from Mazine, but he's just one man. What can you do? Not much, man. Not much. Well oiled war machine that is Sentinels. Nine to zero. They don't even look stressed. Nah. There's nothing that MIBR are doing now. In fact, it looked better earlier on in the game, where they were adding in more contact plays and trying to find the gaps because they were assuming Sentinels were playing off-site a lot. Yeah. But at this point, yeah, it's time for the tactical timeout. But even if MIBR get three on their attack side, even with how good MIBR's defense has looked here on this map, you know, when they played yeah, like, previously, mean... Is this no, anywhere like close to, to being doable? No, it was good, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. Just looks unlikely. Everybody locked in. MIBR with a, a bit of a tact timeout. But genuinely, I mean, we can see all the available options. We can see all the information when we're casting up here. And even I'm struggling to come up with options. Yeah, I think there's got to be more in terms of trying to contact around the map just a little. Because I think MIBR have got stuck in the last kind of four rounds of just pouncing on a site. Trying to go all in. And they don't really know who's anchoring. Yeah. They don't really know where the trip setups are. And I think that when Sen are playing, because they do like to fall off sites fairly easily and play for the retake, there should be some space that opens up. You know, if the Cypher setup is over towards A and you have that ramp lurk that finds the camera, then maybe you can get one of your other Smokes players out towards B. I think trying to play for the aggressive lurks on either side of the map and see who comes out with the goods. It sounds a bit desperate, but I think that might be their best opportunity at this point. It is desperation time for MIBR. 
on this map at least. Yeah. And really, when you look at the decider on Sunset, which is most teams have been banning that against Sentinels. MIBR, time to get a little bit quirky with the timings perhaps, but it looks like this is again another all-in approach. Flash, the connection, and Tens is there to instantly respond. He drops him. JZZ, unable to lead the initiative here for the rest of the team, and still they're going to follow through. Attempt to at least get a bit of that space, but another first kill does not go their way. Tens, still here, bullets rattling. Jump spot, getting that info, seeing the one player here. What is the answer again for MIBR? Backing away. Minute 10 on the clock. And because this round, they started five towards a ramp. Soon as they lose JCZ, they have no options everywhere else. No. And no, no prior map control has been gained by a player lurking. Yeah, it's they just... don't know. Zekin could have walked down mid. They, you know, the Sentinels players might be inside B main right now, ready for this. It's very difficult. Arthazine could make something happen on an aggressive lurk towards A. They didn't see the Cypher. Or what they're relying on, but generally John and Tens are going to be on opposite sides of the map. These are the difficulties. Desk was talking about, you know, these solo sky comps. It's a little bit dated at this point. MIBR forced to just double up for the contact their way into positions. Oh, Jack Meister was not ready. That's quite incredible, that timing. Couldn't have been more perfect for Zekin. Is that off the cam? I'm not 100%. Yeah, not too sure either, but on QT. Now knows his presence here, but time. Oh, it's completely against him. 12 seconds. Going down to almost nothing. Lovely kill for FRZ. Tap off the plan. Mazine doesn't stick. Doesn't commit. Finally, though. Bit of trust in his teammates, at least to have his back, but it's a really unorthodox plan location. And this post plan relies heavily on these heaven players. This fight that's coming up, it's going to be critical. It's going to be vital. Flash. Very deep onto the ankle. Artazine is forwards. And he's trying to pounce. Lovely movement. Isolates one. Isolates the next. And this is what they needed. An individuality. Camp broken. Leave it to John QT. But the round should be sealed, John. Not too much you can do here. A fight there from hell. So finally, MIBR, they get themselves on the board. Let that be a lesson to you, Sentinels. Nobody takes 10 rounds in a row against <laughs> MIBR. Yeah. Adazine stepping up there. Massive performance from him. Being able to hold off. That retake could be heaven. Can they get three? Can they get the pistol? Can they make this doable? It's important the Sentinels don't take their foot off the gas completely. Like we said, both of these teams should be better on the defense side. But any round has just been, I mean, so far away from coming for MIBR until that 3K. Painstaking, and it just gets even worse off the rip. I mean, the first kill's going Sentinel's way every single time. And JCZ there isn't even in a super committed position. He just, they know that they're going for a ramp control. Spam when the wall goes up. And Sassy's got a perfect angle. What's the call again? Everybody still holding Here. hands into the A main choke. They pause, grab the orb. Trailblazer are broken, but full reinforcements are arriving. The cavalry is here. The call is made from Sen. They want to re-clear this one. Forwards, Artazine leading it, but Tens! Onto the high ground, the collapse of Pinter maneuvers. It's just elite. RGL, the lone survivor. just no world is that there's just no world it's tough in this position for MIBR because you want to still believe but when you're down 9-1 and you're in a 1v4 you know it's going to be 10-1 and the rest of your teammates are sat there quietly stewing 30 yeah. seconds left thinking about the situation that they're in thinking about maybe even at this point the next half the next map maybe even as well it is tough and this is a grueling play-ins that we've got coming up oh yeah mrbr playing back-to-back -back matches after beating Ten or losing to sentinels and they still have another one instantly afterwards it is a marathon really i mean it's a grueling gauntlet test that endurance test the form as well coming into each of these matches but for now it's all sentinels Last and i feel bad for mibr half. too because i can definitely say i underrated mibr coming into this season yeah what we've seen of them in kickoff so far they did such a great oh. job at responding in that car nine game and maybe if they'd started defense on split 
Maybe this could have been a little bit <laughs> of a closer match. But at the moment, they are getting slammed. Yeah. It's systematic dismantling, really. Head ups adjustments. There's no heavy read for MIBR here. At this point, it's just relying on that individuality. Raw firepower. And they carve out a path into mid. Seekers drop down. Celsius has to respect that one now. Backs away entirely to Molly. What? Yes, to chase his hair. It was comboed, I think, with a nade from the other side of the map. That was second. Oh, how is just the simplest of util combos finding the pick for them at the beginning of the round? JZZ's yeah. first death ratio must be off the charts right now. It's frantic by MIBR. I mean, they see the slightest of weaknesses, the potential for a kill, and they all just try and jump onto it. Leads to those openings happening for them. Remember, there's one player anchoring onto the site. This entire time, Zelda, he retreated, smoked here to divide the map. At least into the side, Paranoia sent flying. Look for the repeat, you can hear the footsteps all around him. They just don't know where he is. Good, instant response from FRC. He pretends he's lurking, contacting into the angle. Finds himself a 3-1. Planted. Two players left alive for MIBR in the final round of this half. Zekin is very carefully clearing. Sassy tried to do the same and got caught. FRC on an interesting off angle. Taking down is former teammate from ancient times. Second, it's not playing with tens yet. Still worried, actually, there could be a player up into heaven. Pulse. That spot two, not too sure, but the info may be there with ping, satchel, kill. There from Mazzy in tens. Tens all in a 1v2. It's too much for him to tackle, even with that momentous lead. So a second round for MIBR. The question Switching being, sides. will it be enough? A thin, thin thread that MRBR's chances on split are balancing by right now. Nice off angles played there by FRZ and by Mazin, who got caught by the Omen ultimate and then repositioned to catch second. What's the morale looking like even? Yeah, I mean, that is just such a question. Well, Sentinels have had to fight their way into the play-ins, but Zelsus is confident that their chances Oh, I definitely think that Sentinels is a favorite of playing like, you know, Loud, 100 Thieves, Lev, Us, like, you know, outside of all, all things considered, every team in NA is really stacked and really good. Like, I think NA is like the best region. But outside of that, I do think our group was like the hardest group. So, you know, we're coming into play in full confidence. Obviously, we lost to Loud pretty closely. Like, if you look back the game, it was really close split, really close on ascent, considering the rounds or whatever, the mistakes we made, stuff like that. No discredit to them. Like, Loud earned that game. They won it. Um, but I think for us, like, we're still like, you know, it could, it could swing either way in our group. But now that, you know, we made play in, I think, I think we're the favorites for sure. It is really important that Sentinels perform in matches that super matter, like this, like the play-ins that they're in currently. Because it's one thing to be the favorites and to feel really good about how you're performing, but you've also got to bring it in these massive moments and put down the competition and make sure that you don't get upset. And at the moment, it's not like Sentinels came into this thinking it's just MIBR. And they have put on a masterclass performance on this defense side. And they're pretty close to closing it out on the first map. About the Sentinels, I mean, they've got a lot to achieve this year with the expectations that get weighed against them. The previous year wasn't good at all in the slightest. Same could be said for MIBR. These are two teams that, you know, they are trying to get that chance of redemption. This is what 2024 is all about for them. They don't want to end it early. You know, yes, bad outcome for this first match doesn't mean the end of the world for the play ins, but it does make it significantly harder. And for Sentinels, they are in full control of the situation right now. It's 10 to 2. The next pistol round is basically going to decide this map. I think redemption is a great word for describing both of these teams. They're both trying to rewrite their reputations from 2023 yeah. and carve out new identities for themselves. But the expectations are still quite different. For MABR, being competitive is a huge step up. For Sentinels, they're looking actually to win, to go to Madrid, to make it out of the players. Here comes the pistol. MIBR dominating B main control at the beginning, this but this double flash sanity. Jason, hey, anti flash though, he dodges it and just turns them into mincemeat. Sick setup. Anticipated that reclear completely, knew what was coming. Things get difficult, but MIBR have also lost a lot of information. They've given up, up B site completely, they've given up mid. 
So there is still potential here for Tenzor John QD to just catch people on unexpected timings. And maybe are going to have to play tight together here. Opting to just play side by side, side by side. The running and cutting will do it. Tap from Tens, but three players to contend and tangle with. Smoke drops. Plant. Have to push this one back, Trailblazer. Be there. Avoided and dodged. Another smoke on top of it. In for the smoke. Wow, I mean, Mazin's just way ahead of the curve. Damage done. 1v1. Oh. Okay, safe hands from Artazine, just barely. Well done by Artazine at the end there for saving that round. But then my VR looking I mean, a bit was so too loose. Far ahead of everyone there. There was no follow of him just this, running. This oh. opening to the round though, beautiful from MIVR, right? Yeah, you, you gotta say that to set them up in the player advantage. And then Mazine, whoa, looking a little out of it, maybe a bit. You know, still mentally taxed from the first half. And maybe Ara got to focus up, make sure that they convert those rounds after setting up their game plan so well at the, f at the start, in the first, like, five seconds. Here's another round where the same story has to happen, right? You have a massive advantage. You've got to play tight to close it out. You can't allow Sentinels any edge into this. It's got to be so clean to pull off this comeback. going out. Util combo. A through one side. Nice timing there from RGL. And that is clean. That's what you want to see. If you made in Brazil. Perfectly clean. They didn't manage to load the kills into somebody with a huge ultimate. But if they can get the cosmic divide online at some point soon, that'll be really useful for retake situations. Excellent Close. timing, yeah. Excellent timing from RGL. Now we're taking a look at Sentinel. Set up to go for some kind of A pressure. With JZZ and Mazin to receive. First time we see the guns in the hands of Sentinels and their attack side. Scout That's a lovely ball. one. Tens falls almost immediately. That is real early. Mazin uses the dog in the first three seconds of the round and JZZ just swings instantly. Eager to take these fights. Flex a bit of that muscle and firepower. That is a really interesting way to deal with it. The jiggle peek onto the corner is common enough. A wide face evens it out four to four, even baiting the dash out of Artazine, thinking there was going to be something else to it. It's a difficult round to approach without tens on the board. The Omen smokes. Not having access to them means you have so many different angles to worry about. John and Sassy looking like they wanted to pressure ramp there for a moment. Sassy still has the trailblazer. These players are close though. So Re-clearing the timing. Up. Indecisive from Sen. But now they've committed. Yeah, all play four players now leading the charge onto the site. They have given up control of main. Wrapped around Celsius. Traded. Only for the one. Three versus three here. The post map positioning is not good from Sentinel. It's going to have to take some magical moments for them to try and bail themselves out of this one here. Containment by MIBR. Got every angle watched for. Every angle but Zekken. Sprays them through. 30 health to his name. And FRZ is left alone with the Spectre. Obtains the upgrade. The nasty, nasty angle. That's ludicrous. That is ludicrous. Sentinels were in such an uncomfortable position. Three and elbow. They were looking to try to flash off cam contact and then realize that they were going to get pushed from screens. They're forced to accelerate. And then somehow, Zekin manages to spray down two. Oh, right before he gets punished by FRZ peeking screens. Not too bad, though, for MIBR. That was their bonus. They've done some damage to the Sentinel's economy. And Artazine has the Operator online, looking to try to fight in front of this Viper setup over on B. Of every round lost, the gap slowly closes. It's a little bit more suffocating. Tens is just deep here. Both TP's committed. There was a stun. The Trailblazer, he is lucky to be alive. And if that forces people from Sentinels to back off, you have to be aware of this off-angle off that's happening over towards B. This line 
Interesting interaction with how it works with the Viper Wall there. Although it looks like they're managing to avoid it. Circumventing Artisan and his impact. Three players into mid RGL. Tucked into the smoke. Potential danger here for him. He needs a refresh into this mid angle here. He's in a lot of trouble. Here's the noise cues that are being made. FRZ now has to step up. FRZ this and angle, this so angle, alone. This angle, double drop oh. down! Cleans him up! That's up. huge. Exactly what the doctor ordered for MIBR. Just a solo play, tucking in the corner, taking a gamble, pays off. Now it has to be the solo plays across the map. Celsius can get anything done, but for MIBR, it's exactly what they needed. Toxins going up. Tucking the drop down. Oh, FRZ missing the timing on that one, so. Gotta know that there's space there for them with 20 seconds left, though. This is it. Gotta get a move on if you are Sentinels here. RGL, does he expect the players across? Definitely does now from the sound. Q's a bit of a trail sold out by them. Drops left. one. Spike hits the deck. Follow up from Zelsis is there, but they have to contend Five with main. Seconds. This position of Ardazine, he sees the barrel and nails the head. Spike. John QT swarmed and approached every angle. MIBR surviving. Four players intact. The guns are there. The economy can get a bit of breathing room. Yeah, that's massively important for MIBR. Uh, and what wins it at the end of the day is not some kind of, you know, fantastic set play on the defense, but it's a I'm tiny little up, area uncleared by Sen as they did that two. double drop into Vent. FRC just tucked right up against the wall as, as yeah. close as you could possibly be. The most likely angle for Sentinels to not clear. This angle's a brutal one. And they double drop down to make sure if there is somebody in Vent, they can get that trade kill. I don't know. I mean, sometimes it happens, but... It can be a bit of a view model dip. Spike player. Yeah, sometimes the gun ends up blocking a player in that angle. That's why they get so much value. But in that case, it was a huge step up. And with MRBR being so many rounds down, they're willing to take those kind of risks. Yeah. You saw the, the kind of two people covering mid, RGL and FRZ, were both taking those kind of risks. RGL was just ready to fight inside a smoke, and FRZ tucked himself in a corner, hoping not to get cleared. Sen's attack side on this map has certainly not looked as good as their defense. And that's why we were saying there were chances for MIBR if they got enough at the half and won the pistol. Well, they got the pistol, but only two at the half. That's, that does make things, that makes things very tough. Not difficult, but not an impossibility. Certainly not impossible. Just got to keep stringing together the rounds. Take them one at a time. Yeah. One step at a time. Big ults online. So Chase is able to show a stopper. Definitely use that to try and react, maybe play a bit more riskily on some certain angles as well. You can get away with murder. Not worried about stuns connecting or being cleared out. MMBR are also finding the first pick with much higher consistency than they were in the first half. They took down tens at the beginning of one of the rounds very quickly. Tight burst of the bullets. An attempt to punish across with the Trailblazer. Sassy set up, paranoia, gliding through. Molly at the feet though, to try and stop them. What a no scope. Oh my, pure reactions at play here from Ardazine. You could hear the sound cue of that one with the Santos gliding through the air, but the side is gathered and gained now for Sentinels. It was such an awesome setup too. Sassy flashed heaven from ramp as if Zaken was going to push from that angle. Really disguising the pathing. Weaker weaponry from Sen, now 10 for the reposition. It was spotted. As he should be aware of this. Clear. Recall cleared. Called by MIBR. Artazine hoping to just hold any sort of aggressive push that might just come from behind. Flash through from Sassy again. Good anti flash. Lovely play by JZZ. And yeah, Artazine's there. So the discipline on point for MIBR. All players surviving. And dealing with the threats the Sen tried to throw in. A bit too aggressive there from Tens, I think. You know, he's not the Astra, so he's not playing his life for a Flawless. pull or something like that, but just trying to take the 1v3 over towards Ram without Sassy to play off. Probably not the nicest way that you could have played that. But this shot to... Oh, basically, the entirety of that round on the Eco is designed for Zekin to fly in there, everybody to be looking towards Ram, and Zekin to be able to get a cheap kill. And Ardazine shits, shuts it down with, or both, to be honest, <laughs> with a quick scope. Here. The good news for them. No real ults committed for MIBR. Plenty to work with. 
and now the rally forwards. So Paranoid has set this one up, links it with the satchel. So Zekun, with all that space, 10 to the TP. There's, There's no way you commit that. Cancelled. <laughs> Mazine, that's through the smoke. Rocket has to be offloaded into the smoke. Just barely yeah, missing each other. And there's a flash to set it up. And the push through. Second. Oh, he deletes him. Well, it didn't work last round. Throwing second into the heaven smoke, but perfectly executed there. And Sen get themselves up to map point. Match point. I mean, that was huge. Really explosive from Sen. I thought for a moment Tenz was going to stick the TP, yeah. get punished by RGL. <laughs> but the play throughout heaven, immaculate. That is just a ridiculous way to open up the round. Lovely player. I really enjoy how they've built this synergy now this year between Zekin and Sassi. Amazing setup with the flash. Now all they need is one showstopper. Ah, reactions! Farsi to take him out, but it's a post-mortem kill from Zekin, so even four versus four. TP4 is tens. You're right behind him, man! What? what are you doing? I don't think there's any need to go for that in the 4v4. That is a little bit insane. He's assuming that there's not going to be anybody in vents because they already took down the Viper, but that's a, that's a large assumption after, like, you know, five seconds have already passed since you got the kill. Still possible for the win here. Committing big ultimates that they could have possibly saved for a better opportunity. Three players just left alive here, but the Viper's Pit does it's, make it really It's so hard, hard to get the plan down here. It is. And that's attack, forcing a response from MIBR. That's what Sen were hoping for. Seekers used up through. Even to a variety of players of MIBR, but still no kills going away of Sen, and they just can't get a safe plan off over the top. Dealt with, traded, instantaneous. Sassy pit drop down, and he will be falling. John QT, last one left, 1v2. They don't know where he is. They don't know where he is. There's 28 seconds left. Up top, up top, up top of Mazine. Now that got a little silly. It did get a little silly. And there was a chance for John to be able to finish that out in the 1v2. I think, generally speaking, you probably don't want to be taking those kind of risks, even though you're up 12-7. Those were big ultimates invested. Massive ultimates. I mean, you think about it, Showstopper, Viper's Pit, Seekers, Seekers. everything being used into that, and a round loss. It might be, ah, uh, I'd be really pleased with that. <laughs> that was just insane to begin. I mean, I do enjoy the Red Guard cosplay that Ten sometimes puts on. <laughs> it's nice that even in Americas, we can experience Angel and Red Guard. Living vicariously through. Very early trailblazer. That space taken up, vacuumed into B main. Group up from Sen, it's four players into Boys mid. And I have to make a call here to re-clear into B main. Zine with the forward angle. Good to break the dog. Tense has a really nice paranoia line if he wants to use it for them to retake B main control. And as good as the beginning as you could hope for, fair maybe, huh? It, it, it certainly is. Oh, well, as I say that, I don't know how that kill comes through. Maybe just raw spam as the smoke was... I'm not sure the smoke blossomed. was up. Yeah. I think they might have just walked out into mid before that. An awkward look at, one. Look at this line here that Artisine is posted on. They've got cages potentially there. to cross this, have they? No, not quite. I look at the beginning. Get a bit explosive into it. Nothing to clear him off the angle. So it was important in the end. Dash. Is there TP? Cuts across. No one's watching and managing it. Repositions. And now finally, the charge in and attempt by MIBR to really just collapse, collide with these players. John QT defending his teammates back. It's crumbled. This is the map. It's all on the line. Artisan, after such a brutal beginning for them, jumping round, can it? The quick scope. It's cleaned up. An immaculate first half from Sentinels. Sloppy ending, but it doesn't matter. Gets the job done. They win on split. Looking towards Ascent and Sunset coming up. This kind of format, every single map matters. Every single round matters. It's a great point. <laughs> there is a chance that we get some <laughs> crazy draws. We have to look back to rounds potentially thrown away in earlier matches, but I think in general, Sentinels will be very happy 
that the first half went so perfectly and they were able to put away MIBR. We've talked a lot about how unpredictable these kind of uh, formats are. Yeah. yeah. Nothing is given, nothing is free. Nothing is free. Well, we're going to be stepping away for just a bit, but GB and the Analyst Desk are going to be breaking it all down for map number one, so do not go anywhere. You okay? No. I live with a broken phone. I can't trade in. Okay, that's dramatic. But our plan's Verizon. Everyone can trade in their old phone and get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with AI on them. A new phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Wait, I'm on Verizon. Can I still get it? Yeah. I gotta trade this in, right? New and existing customers can trade in any Samsung phone for a new Galaxy S24 Plus watch and tablet, all on us. That's up to $1,800 in value, only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings. Thank you. 